Hello everybody. Right, welcome back to this last session. What a patient lot you've been. Now you see uh, that it's time for awards, the gold medals, which we give out every year. Um, but today, we've got a very special award, and it's going to go to a very special man. When Jimmy Goldsmith got the referendum party going, um, it did an enormous amount of good, waking up the country as to what the European project meant. And they fielded 550 candidates across the entire United Kingdom. And of all of those candidates, the man that got the highest number of votes for the referendum party was a chap that stood in Harwich by the name of Geoffrey Tipford. And I recruited Geoffrey into UKIP over, I think it was a pretty good lunch, Geoffrey, wasn't it? And Geoffrey joined us. And in 1999, was elected as one of our three MEPs to the European Parliament. And it's worth noting that at the time Geoffrey was elected to the European Parliament, he'd already been retired some years. He'd been a successful businessman, he'd been a family man, he'd been for many years a local Conservative councillor, but he was actually past retirement age when he first got elected to the European Parliament. Uh, but he wasn't to have an easy time, because new political parties, when they have a bit of success, also they have a few problems. And in 2000, uh, this party went through a terrible schism, a terrible rift. In fact, the thing nearly fell to pieces. And the man that stepped in, and was elected leader of the party in 2000 and who steadied the whole thing down and with the help of many others managed to put UKIP back on track and did that role as leader until 2002 was Geoffrey Titford and we owe him as a party a huge debt for doing just that. And he went on and he spent 10 years as an MEP, and he stood down in the 2009 European elections. So that, you would have thought, was the end of it, wasn't it? Until Lord Pearson resigned as leader last summer, you may remember, until we had a hiatus, and we had a problem, and Geoffrey, last year, once again, stepped into the breach as acting leader of the party until the 5th of November, when I became the leader. Again, so Geoffrey and I have both been leaders of UKIP twice. <laughs> so we do owe him a great debt. He is a great gentleman who always behaves with absolutely the utmost dignity, uh, the finest of manners. He's been the most amazing ambassador, I think, for this party. I've hardly ever seen him get angry, maybe once or twice with me, but hardly ever. See him get angry. He always keeps calm. He really is, I think, our great elder statesman in this party. And I'm really pleased to say that by a resolution of the National Executive Committee on the 8th of September, last Thursday, unanimously, the party appoints Geoffrey Tipford to the position of Honorary Life President of UK. Geoffrey. <laughs> Surprises, can't you? <laughs> it wasn't until I arrived here this morning that Steve Crowder said, I know surprises are surprises, but sometimes they have to be orchestrated. And he said, I think you better know what's going to happen to you today. <laughs> so that was quite a surprise. I suppose, looking at this conference, you must have felt like I did. That UKIP is now large enough to appoint another position in your ranks. I think it's been a most excellent ex um, conference and exhibition downstairs. 
And I'd like personally like to thank you, Steve, and Kirsten Farage, who have been the basis of getting this conference together. Yes, they've had a team of other people, but Steve and Kirsten were the front runners. Thank you very much indeed. The success of the conference, the success of this party, is very much due to somebody else. Your leader, political leader, Nigel Farage. As Nigel said, we've worked together very, very closely, well, I was going to say for the 10 years in the Parliament, but much longer than that. In fact, since I joined you, I don't know, 14, 15 years ago, it seems a long time. He and I have almost lived in each other's pockets, certainly had meetings galore, usually over an excellent lunch in Strasbourg, and a couple of bottles. And a lot of the decisions that conference has taken today have been the work that has gone on behind the scenes. But I'm coming to one thing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are going to have a successful party, if you are going to have a party that is going to go forward and change the policies and perhaps the political agenda of this country, there is one thing you must observe. Both you, all of you, the officers we have in the party, and even our MEPs have got to do one thing. They've got to put away their personal agendas. There is a larger, much larger issue out there which we have to defend our right and to fight for and to achieve. And this cannot be done when there is diversion in amongst our ranks. All of the people that are here today, all the people that are going to come forward and receive medals later on, have worked ceaselessly to make this party the great party that it is. I have been sold on UKIP and its ideals from day one. From actually that first luncheon, somewhere in the Strand, if I remember rightly, and then I was taken to a meeting immediately afterwards, which I hadn't anticipated, and was stuck on a platform. And Michael Holmes turned to me and said, it's your turn to say something. <laughs> that was the first surprise. But it wasn't hard for me to find words. Because suddenly I saw the faces in front of me. And I realised that everyone there at that meeting in London was there for one sole reason. And it was the same reason that I was standing for. And I felt that I had been adopted by you as a member, as a candidate, and as somebody who had got to show their merit in the days to come. I hope I've done that. But I want you to remember one other thing. When the people come up here this afternoon and receive their gold awards, and the fact that I have had this wonderful document given to me and the role as your life president here, we don't do it for this. We haven't done it for the badges, the recognition of that. These are people that have worked ceaselessly all the way along, year after year, day after day, and I'll bank you anything that on Monday morning they'll be back to our cause and fighting for us again in their constituencies. That is what makes UKIP great, and that is what is going to reflect in the ballot boxes in the years to come. Thank you very much indeed great honour you've given to me. I can assure you that I'll be back on the road again. While I've got a strong back, a strong voice and a clear mind, though getting close to that big 8-0 is a bit of concern, <laughs> I'm going to do my bit for you and for my other great cause, my country.